Well, Lawrence, thank you for joining us. Um, we come on uh, off the back of a pretty dramatic two-all draw at Grimsby Town. Obviously, the penalty say probably the most dramatic moment of that. Um, what did you make of the game? Yeah, it was a tough game. Uh, I think they're, they're a good side. I think they showed that on, in the week when they beat Southampton. So, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's a good point. The pitch wasn't great. Uh, they scored two goals pretty quickly and then we showed great character to equalise. So, no, overall, it's a good point and it's a point closer to what we are trying to achieve. Another penalty save too and you can see how much that one meant to you, I think. Yeah, 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 I celebrated a bit wildly. I think it was just because of the moment of the game. I think um, it was quite important. Uh, again, you know, it, it was it was a good performance. I think you know we deserved the point at least. I think based on the majority of that game. So now we're all happy, and hopefully, you know, that can continue into tomorrow. How do you assess this kind of recent run, obviously? Because after that dip in form, it, it's shown great character to turn it round and pick up the points we did here in February. Yeah, no. Um, it was always coming that you know that dip in form. I think in terms of it, you're not going to have a season where you, where you where you win every game or where you don't lose games. I think it's, it's normal. It's part and parcel of football, and you know we were prepared for that. I think um, you know we showed great character to come back and then have had a good run here. So hopefully that can continue. It is a big game, but like all, like them all right now, you know they're all big games. Um, you know we just got to keep doing what we get told in training and implementing that in games, and hopefully we can get three points. One of your former teams soon in town um, in East London tomorrow. What do you think we can expect from that game? Yeah, no, they'll be a good side. I think, um, you know, even when I was there, their, their style was to always play out and, you know, it's a really good footballing side. So um, they'll, they'll be good, you know. I think they, they always have a good squad when they're in League Two. And, you know, I hope, you know, it's a really good footballing game because I think, you know, uh, League Two, you know, a lot of people think that it's just long ball, but it's good to see teams like like Swindon and like us that, you know, they want to get the ball down and play. So, Hopefully it's a good game for the fans and, and hopefully we can come out on top. Do you feel a bit of edge playing former teams? Uh, no, not really. I think it's you know more. You know, it's, it's nice to see people that you haven't seen for a while and you know and you know hear the songs that they their fans will sing. So you know I haven't heard them for a while. So it'll be good to good to see some familiar faces and you know hopefully we can be the ones that, um, smiling at the end of the game. It's the start of a run of four games in March. Um, no more Tuesday games and I guess a bit of a focus every week about what can be coming on the Saturday. Does that make things a little bit more uh, manageable for, for the squad? Uh, yeah, I think it's, it'll be difficult, you know, because we've got some really top players that, you know, that all want to play. So, you know, I think in training, that's where, that's where your bread and butter is, where you, um, where you have to show how good you are. And, and, you know, I think we've got a lot of players, great attitude in the dressing room. You know, no one's, you know, obviously people are upset they're not playing, but, you know, no one's like, you know, going to throw a hissy fit or something like that because they're not playing. We have a really good group of lads and, Hopefully, you know, um, everyone's at it for the rest of the season because I feel like we've got the, the best squad in this league. There's a lot more questions you could ask you, but we're going to turn it over to the fans now because we've um, asked them to send their questions in. So I'll just pull up the list. We're starting with um, Jake. And obviously we were talking about that um, penalty save a minute ago. And he's asked, what do you think has contributed to your high penalty save succession rate? Um, I don't know, really. I think um, I, just, I just guess, really. I Not really guess... You know, I'd have a look the day before, but it's not really in depth. I don't look back, you know, like hundreds of penalties from from before. But, you know, I, I just have a hunch really in the match day because sometimes, you know, you think a player's going to your right and then on the match day he goes to your left. So you know, it's just something how I feel in the game. And, you know, luckily I, I asked Royce on, on Saturday and to be fair, he gave me the... Well, I had a hunch already, but he gave me, he confirmed what my hunch was right. So... Lucky, I saved it. So yeah, no, there's nothing too, nothing too in depth about it. I just try and make saves as best I can. Is it a bit of a confidence thing as well? Because I guess once you've dived the right way, the, the job's still not done. You still got to save it. Yeah, yeah, no. You know, when when he took it on on Saturday, you know, I think it it's kind of slowed down. Like for me anyway. And all I was thinking of was I need to try and push this as wide as I can and as strong as I can so that you know no one can score the rebound. Because obviously saving it's one part, but like, it's where you save it. So no, I was lucky that it was it was out for a throw and you know and then we could go from there really and defend the throw. So yeah, I was lucky. Elliot Hayward asks, what's the best thing about working under Richie Wellens? Um, his detail. Um, you know, we, we go out and train and he gives us all the pictures that we, we see on the weekend and you know not a lot of managers have that capability to and the knowledge really to um, you know to show us what we're actually gonna see tactically and and show us, you know, what what can happen if this if this part of the game happens or if that part of the game happens? You know, he's he's really good in depth tactically, and you know, he helps us all really. I think um, 
especially for me as well, you know, I can see a lot from where I am on the pitch. You know, he, he gives me the, the right pictures and then, you know, with Royce as well, that helps me out. Uh, you know, he's paid loads of games and, you know, I can look up to him as someone that, you know, he's been there, done it, so he helps out a lot. Cameron Lissamore's tweeted, um, it's a fashion question as well. He's asked, what do you think about his Royal Satiri bucket hat? And I can show you a photo of it here. <laughs> it's unbelievable. You should get some of them at the training ground. Would you wear that? Yeah, I would actually. <laughs> I actually would wear it. Right. Tell him to get some sent in. Yeah, Cameron, you heard him. Send him in. Ben Boatman has asked, what is your favourite Orient Keeper shirt? I think I know the answer to that. Uh, what, in the whole time I've been here? The blue one. The blue one's the best. But then this season, the green one. The green one was really, I like the green one a lot because it's weird, but because I have cut socks, um, the purple one, I don't really like it because when I lift my socks up, the back of my, my, my leg is out. So like, I don't really like wearing the purple one, but I love the green one, but the blue one's for me the best. Have you got a kit like overall that's your favorite that you keep that you've got at home? I've got every kit, but the blue one, like the blue one, it was nice. I never wore like that color blue before, so. Did you get an assist in that one as well? Yeah, Crawley, wasn't it? Yeah, Crawley away. Um, James Graham asks, why number 22? Uh, when I first came here, uh, there was only 13, 22, and then I think every number after 30. So I just thought, I'll just wear 22. And um, yeah, like since then I've just, and then I got offered the number one in the, that summer because Brillo retired. And I just thought, nah, there's no point changing it. You know, I always wore one. I don't really want to wear it anymore. I don't really like number one. So I must be one of the only keepers that doesn't like wearing number one. Any famous 22s you look up to? Nah, but since I've started wearing 22, a lot of keepers have been wearing it. Nick Pope, Premier League. Trendsetter. Yeah, there's a lot of 22s, you know, in, like keepers in the Prem, I think. So, yeah, nah, I'll take it. A good question here for you from Ryan Smith. He's asked, who would be the best and worst teammate to be stuck on a desert island with? Uh... The best, I'd say Pratt's, because we ain't gonna survive it. But I think me and Pratt's would be, it'd be hilarious, just like, just laughing at everything. Um, actually, if I could add someone else, I'd put Iddy as well. So me, Idris and Pratt's, I think it'd just be, it'd just be banter. So the why do you think you survive? Nah, you ain't gonna survive in Desert Island. I just don't think you survive. You I just, you after, after, away. after Yeah, I have, but after a while you don't survive. So there's no way you get off it. Like, so, them, us three, I think would be good. The worst? The, the worst two, give me the worst two. The worst if, two. If you're in a trio. Oof. You've got to think about survival as well, like that is a big part. So who's not going to be switched on with this kind of stuff? I'd go Shad. Shad. Shad What's Shad going to be doing? Nah, I just don't think Shad, I don't know what he does. Like, he just, we'd, we'd be finished in a day. But it'd be funny as well with Shad. Uh, who else? I don't know, I think Sweens as well. Because Sweens will be too serious, be panicking too much about trying to get off it, that it'll make, it'll drain me. So I'll go Shad and Sweens. Nice. Um, Jewel, no, La Palota en la cabeza. I don't know what that means, translate that for me. La Palota en la cabeza is uh, the ball in your face. Okay. They've asked, who's your favourite team in Chile? Uh, Colo Colo, yeah. My dad's team. It's the only team he supports, really. So, uh, yeah, them. Uh, I watch, actually, to be fair, I actually watch quite a few of their games now. They play, like, quite late on a Sunday. So, yeah, I watch a lot of them. Uh, yeah, they're a big club, massive club. So, yeah, nah, them. Nice. Jordan asks, what is your favourite ground you've played at, apart from Orient? Uh, love Swindon's. Uh, yeah, Swindon Stadium's good. Uh, atmosphere's good. When it's, going, when it's going really well, you know, it's a really good atmosphere. Um, I don't know who else. What's like the biggest ground you played at? Probably Sheffield United, maybe? Is Sheffield United bigger than Bradford? Yeah. I think um, Sheffield United was an unbelievable atmosphere as well. I'd probably say Sheffield United is the best in a league game. Daniel Roper has asked, were there times when you doubted if it would be your career? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, I didn't actually sign an actual contract till I was 17. But uh, before that, I, was, I just got released from Brentford at 16. So in that period, I had... No one. So I was just like college and they was like trying to get me to do UCAS forms, which is like to apply for uni. I didn't do it, but um, if I actually did, I don't think I'd be playing because I would have gone that route. So now I was lucky. I would have gone down the route of going to a university, which I didn't actually fill in the UCAS. So then I signed. 
This is um, this isn't Dan's question. This is my question. But what would you have done, like, like work-wise? I don't know. You know, I was thinking something to do with sports. So maybe sports science, sport journalism, something like that, along those lines. I was all I love sports, so it would have been something along those lines. Julian has asked: bacon sandwich, red or brown sauce? We couldn't have neither. What's red? Ketchup. Yeah, yeah ketchup. And he's just said pineapple on a pizza. Yes or no? Uh, I wouldn't. I've had it before. I mean, I wouldn't order it, but it's not that bad, to be fair. I think there's better things you can put on a pizza, such as uh, jalapenos, um, anchovies. Nah, beef. That's about it, I think. Boring, isn't it? Barbecue base, though. I can't have tomato base. Don't like it. Sam has asked. It's a good question. I'd be interested to get your opinion on this. Who is the best striker of the ball in training? Striker of the ball. It's like when they hit one, like you know you're not going to... If they get it right, you're not going to save it. Uh, like hard power. Oh, so hard power. Yeah, I think so. So Theo has a lot of power, but I think TJ's is... TJ's can hit, can strike it, and it stays hit really, to be fair. He's a really good striker of the ball. Shows with the goals he scored. Um, yeah, top player. Love playing with him, so I'll go TJ. Is there anyone else that you think might not usually... You'd have thought would have a good one, but it's quite good in training every now and then. Uh, Any defenders? Ed. Ed, yeah, you think you've seen it. He's a good striker of the ball. I think, no, we haven't really got anyone. Well, I'll tell you a player who doesn't actually strike it so hard, but his finishing's unreal. I think Monks. Like, he's got, like, the, he'll curl it, and it seems like he's saying sorry because you're diving for it, and you're actually nowhere near it because it's, it's gone right in the corner. He's a really good finisher, Monks, so he's another really good player I like playing with as well. Nice, got a couple left. Um, Dean says, what save for, the, for Leighton Orient sticks in your mind? I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I really, now, I don't, really, I don't really look at saves, man. It's, it's not something I look at ever. Um, so just for context, you're more interested in like an unbelievable pass or an assist yeah. than a great save. Yeah, which so, is, I think, so, modern keeper. So for a, for a good save that you've made, is there any that like, kind of stand out as one that you've like, been impressed with yourself? Mm. There was one, right? But no one will remember it. I don't think it the players, but I buzzed off it. It was um, Tranmere away last season. We had hardly anyone in fit because we all some people were ill. Uh, it was like a shot. He come from the left and he's shot through Haps' legs and I've tipped it wide. It's not, honestly, if you watch it, you won't think it's a great, but for me, I thought it was a really good save. That's probably my favourite save, to be fair, that I've made here. Um, and then finally, the question from his name is Unexpected Item on Twitter. Um, and he said, Are you a superstitious person? Any pre game or in game rituals? Uh, I like to put my left f- stuff first. So, like my left shin pad, my left sock, my left boot. But I don't do it like all one leg and then the other leg. I do like my left shin pad here, then I do my right, then my left sock, then I do my right. Um, then my right glove before my left glove because I'm right handed. So left footed, right handed. And then, yeah, that's about, oh yeah. And I like to check what's behind me before I put the ball down. So I do like a little spin or I'll look. But I think the spin's quicker because I can see all around me before I put it down. So spin, put the ball down, then I can kick it. If I, I think there was one game, Stockport and Stevenage actually at home, they were hiding behind. So lucky I done a little spin and then. No, 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 I do spin quick because you can see quickly. If you if you check your shoulders, you might not see r- directly behind you. So I like to spin, so then I know exactly, you know who's there. So yeah, that's a good superstition. Well, that's all our questions. Um, so the only action point here is we need a Ross Atiri bucket hat sent in. Yes, please. Yeah, I'll get the boys wearing it.